morning. Welcome to another Sunday morning. I fully intended to do this from the studio today. And I'm not. I'm obviously sitting in the, uh, the lounge of my little house and I'm doing it from there. And there's a very good reason why I'm not doing it from the studio today because quite simply the studio is a bloody mess. And it is a bloody mess because yours truly decided he was going to change it around a bit uh, to accommodate, yes, another new piece of equipment. Uh, and what started off as a, a fairly simple exercise has turned into quite a mammoth redesign. Um, so it is really a mess at the moment with keyboards all over the damn shop. I can't use it. Um, I didn't intend to do that, but hey ho, that's where we are. So we're going to do this from here. So first things off, I think I showed last week I showed you my white t-shirt with pictures of the D series on it. All right, that was a photograph that I took with a friend and we decided to get it made up into a t-shirt. Okay, which I think is pretty cool. Unbeknownst to me, my friend took another photograph that I'd taken, which was this one here, of my Kronos, and decided to make a t-shirt of that as well. So, this week I was sitting there and I got presented with this t-shirt of me. Now, actually, it's quite, I, li I really like the pose and I really like the keyboard, but I'm not sure about it being a t-shirt. Hey-ho, I put it on, I'm wearing it on the channel, it's being used, but jury's out, I think. You know, I'm not quite self-indulgent to put myself on my own T-shirt. <laughs> anyway, moving on. A um, couple of things that came up this week. Um, one of the first things that came up was I came across this on the internet. Now, it's not a particularly great photograph. But for those of you who don't know what that is, that is a DX1. That is the daddy of the DX series, okay? It is a massive piece of equipment. In fact, to the point where I've only ever seen one of these once and I've lifted it and it took two of us to lift it because it was so damn heavy. Um, it's one of those pieces of equipment that if you collect synthesizers, especially legacy tech, you'd, you'd die to have in your collection. Unfortunately, that one is on the internet for $9,999. A little bit out of my price range. But the DX1 was effectively, um, if I get this right, because I'm doing this from memory, it was effectively two uh, DX7s in terms of the way it was constructed. Um, so you actually had two uh, complete units in there that you could layer on top of each other. A very, very powerful piece of kit. And the other thing that was really interesting with this was it was designed for um, studio uh, and gigging use because the actual outputs on this, instead of like most keyboards that of the day were quarter inch jack, um, this actually had balanced XLR outputs on it something you don't see very often. And in fact, actually, it's something really interesting because I'm looking at the, um, uh, the, the DJ 808, 505, and 202 that have just been released. They've all got balanced outputs. Now, I always find this a bit, a bit interesting because some manufacturers put balanced outputs on them and some manufacturers don't. I, I think there needs to be a standard between the two, you know, um, although balanced outputs make, it, make a, a real pain in the ass when it comes to studio patching, I might add. Different, 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 completely different tack, that one. Anyway, so, here we are, and this week we had 808 day. Now, this, this is the second 808 day. First one was obviously back in um, 2015. Uh, and when they had 808 day in 2015, we, they launched the 808 movie, which was the, the tribute to the original TR 808 um, and you know there's lots of people you know there Jimmy Jam etc etc who were on that on that footage stating the reason why they used the 808 uh, and the reason why to be honest they still use the 808 you know here we are 
30 years later and the 808 is still a pivotal part of some of these uh, producers set up in terms of how they make music. So this 808 day came along and uh, you have to give me a moment because I just need to put something on my page so I can read from it. So this 808 day, they released two new boutique modules. The first was the TR-08, okay, which is the boutique version of the original 808. Now I've said before that I am not a fan of the boutique series, and I do not make, I do not change my opinion on that. Um, and the reason why I'm not a fan of the boutique series is power. Okay, being able to power the damn thing without a five volt USB power supply. However, and this is a really big however, from everything I have seen on the TR08, I've bought it. It's not going to be delivered for another two and a half months, but I still bought it. Okay, I've bought a TR8. So for those of you who haven't seen what the TR8 looks like, I took a couple of screenshots and printed them off so I could show them to the camera. And as you can see, like the 909 that was released um, a little while back, was it on the, on the big day or was it just before? But like the 909, they've kept it pretty damn faithful to the original 808 styling, although they have updated this one. So what they've done here is um, they've taken some of the components they put into TR8 and they've moved them back into this. So you now get compression, you get gain, you get tuning, you get the ability to pan the, the instrument left to right. Okay, or pan the, 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 uh, the part of the drum kit left to right. So you, you've got all that on here that you didn't have on the original. Um, the other thing they've put onto here, and I really don't quite understand how this works at the moment because I haven't really got into it and nowhere around me has one of these things, is the actual sub-steps for the 16-step sequencer that they've put on here. Um, that will be really interesting to get into. And the other thing they've done which is uh, slightly different, so the original 808 had multiple quarter inch jacks in the back of it and those multiple quarter inch jacks allow you to assign an instrument or an instrument came out on each one of those jack points. This doesn't do the same thing, so if I was to show you the back of this, there it is, like so. Ooh. You can see that there are only um, these mini jacks. There's no separate ones. What they've done is they've transferred that functionality onto the USB exactly like the TR8, um, in that you now have, I think it's, they've got 10 outputs on the USB. So you have to be, in order to, to separate those out, you have to be using this via a computer or the MX1. Actually, in fact, you can't use, yeah, you could use it via the MX1. And I'm going to actually do something on the MX1 um, shortly because there seems to be a hell of a lot of confusion about the MX1 and how you use the MX1. And I don't really think there should be that much confusion about it if you just think about it logically. But most people really get sort of um, confused by it. Anyway, looking at the back of it, this is the only disappointment I've got for this. And that is the fact that there's no power on the back of it. For God's sake, Roland, you, you introduced the SE02 um, recently. It had a power socket on it. I thought, thank God, Roland have finally listened and put a power socket on the boutique. And then the next one comes along, which is this one, the Roland, uh, the, the 8i, and the SH101, which I'm just about to come on to. And there's no power supply on it. For God's sake, start waking up and stick a power supply on the damn thing. Even if it's just a 9 volt and you have to have a transformer, put a power supply on the damn thing so that us musicians can power it from the mains. I just It, it buggers belief, really, it does, because the way this stuff works is you either put batteries in it, which I'm not a fan of because batteries tend to go dead and they leak all over the bloody equipment if you forget about them, or... 
you have to power it via USB, which means you can't use an MX1, which means you have to have a powered hub, which means yeah, you, you sort of see the, see the drift here. Anyway, um, so, blah, 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 where am I going to go? Ran over. The other thing that was, intru was introduced this week was the, um, the SH101, or the SH01 as they've now called it in the boutique series. And um, I thought I printed out a picture of it, but I haven't. Um, now that comes apparently in three colours, so you can get it in red, you can get it in blue, and you can get it in grey. And apparently they've only made three and a half thousand or three thousand three hundred of each one. Um, the grey one's available now. The red and the blue apparently won't be available till October. Although I did have a look um, a couple of days ago at the uh, toy shop website. And they're predicting a delivery date again, like the 808, sorry, the 808, sorry, the TR08, um, back end of October. So I think you can get one or one event. However, again, they've made some improvements to the 01 over the over the 101, in that um, it's polyphonic, whereas the what the original was mono. Um, it has something called unison mode on it, which I really, I'm just getting my head around, which is I think you can effectively take four voices and layer those four voices on top of each other to make a fatter sound, uh, which is something you couldn't do on the, on the 101 um, without some sort of recording trickery. Um, and the other, the other thing, uh, no, that was it actually. That was the only couple of things I wrote down actually on it. The main, the main pieces that I thought were interesting. Yeah. So um, that, it sounds interesting, and there's what there is actually is there's a great uh, video on uh, YouTube. So if you look for Kibu SH01, um, you'll find this video, and he actually demos it. And he is uh, he's sort of like a I don't know whether you've ever come across Kibu. I've talked about him before on the on the channel, but he's a Finnish guy, a uh, Finnish musician who loves. His analog and retro digital synths. There's very little in his in his rig that is is modern day, and he creates a lot of ambient Jean-Michel Jarre style uh, tracks. Well worth a le listen. I really, really do uh, mean that because he is a struggling musician. Well, would I say struggling musician? We're all struggling musicians at heart. Um, but he is a musician who is out there making it happen and needs support from people like us who like to listen to his music. So that was the SH-101, or the SH-01 as it's properly announced. Um, so moving on, another thing that took, took, took my eye this week was the fact that there was a, a, there was a couple of articles I saw on the, on the interweb about Roland trying to push the use of um, the boutique series and the aria or area or whatever you want to call it I, I can never pronounce the damn thing um, but from the that range of equipment and I think there's a lot of confusion which is what I said about the MX1 a minute ago about how this stuff all hangs together uh, and Roland have have decided now to actually into select dealerships um, to actually put in these these aria boutique booths so that you can actually go and play with the equipment. What I find really interesting about that statement is the fact that there must be a hell of a lot of places where you can't go and play with the equipment. And that I find interesting. So my local toy shop is Anderton's in Guildford, okay, which is where I live in Surrey, or close to where I live in Surrey. And Anderton's in Guildford are a fantastic shop for a musician. Everything is out, everything you can play with. Okay, if you want in, you won't go in there and you want to buy a guitar, a drum kit, an amplifier, keyboard, electronic music equipment, it's there and they fall over themselves backwards to allow you to play with it. There's another place that I, I go to occasionally, and I go there regularly because it's a bit of a hike for me, which is absolute near Bournemouth, again, down, down on the south coast in England. And they're set up pretty much the same way. In fact, actually, in floor space, I would say, and I would say, um, absolutely, Bournemouth is actually bigger 
um, but it's just further away from where I am. Because absolutely in Bournemouth also has rehearsal studios and everything else interlinked into the facility. Um, but it's really interesting, isn't it? You know, I'm all into supporting your local music shop, but I think the local music shop needs to be bigger or it needs to specialise. And that's where I think a lot of the problems come quite often with this stuff, is that in order to specialise, you either be, decide, decide to become a, a keyboard electronic music shop or a guitar shack or a drum shack or whatever it happens to be. And I think too many people are trying to bridge the spectrum of musical instruments and I don't think they actually give service to everything they need to give service to. Now that's my personal opinion, having gone into some local music shops um, where you know they do they're a bit of a, do a bit of everything but nothing particularly great and I find that you know they should they should specialize if they're if they're into if they're flutes and brass and woodwind or whatever it happens to be they should specialize in that and just keep away from the other stuff um, let somebody else do it and somebody else can normally do it better um, so where am I going with this ramble um, I suppose where I'm going with this is the fact that if your music shop does not have this stuff out for you to be able to play before you actually part with your hard-earned cash, go somewhere else. The other thing I would say about this, and this is, this, is, this is my personal opinion in the UK, I'm not sure about elsewhere in the world, but I found that my local toy shop, again, Anderton's, there is no differential between the price on their website and the price in store. Okay, they will sh apart from the shipping cost on top, there's no actual price differential between the actual cost of the product. You buy it the same either way. Um, and that makes me buy from them because they're not trying to do an internet deal. And yes, I probably could get a piece of equipment a little bit cheaper going elsewhere, but I don't know, I don't know what service I'm after sales service I'm gonna get. Whereas I know at Anderton's I get brilliant after sales service. So it's up to you really to choose what you want. Um, you buy it off the internet, you take your chance, you get something, you worry about the after sales service and the, and the service in general. You go somewhere like Anderton's, which is known, you get brilliant sales service, they are very knowledgeable about the product, they do lots of YouTube stuff about product anyway, and if something goes wrong, they are on the other end of the phone and they're extremely helpful. Your choice. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. And the final thing I'm just going to rant on about before I shut up and uh, go and have my bacon butty, uh, which is being prepared over there at the moment, um, is I did notice that the um, Roland have snuck out a patch um, for the TR-8. And apparently the reason for the patch is so they can trigger or can use um, one of the other uh, instruments that's been introduced recently which is the SP404SX. Now I've never used an SP404SX, I can't really comment on it. Um, it's I've got hardware synthesizers, sorry hardware samplers I should say, which are probably in a much better position than that is for me to use. It's not something I look at. But there is a new patch out. Now the thing for me that is interesting is they've now um, increase the range of frequencies that the um, TR-08, sorry, TR-8 will operate at. So they've now got, it will now support 44.1, 48 and 96 um, kilohertz. So, very interesting indeed. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I did print this out and I, I am going to do something on this. This was um, off one of the um, forums Excuse me. Um, which was very interesting when I looked at this because it just sort of purely was a was a setup that I can't recognise. Um, it's not a USB setup that seems to actually work because the clock. I don't know whether you can see that in there. Um, there's no linkage between your drum machine and your computer, so you have two clocks running. You'll never get anything synchronised without playing around with it it's, uh, a hell of a lot. So the key, the key to all this stuff going together is one clock source. 
Um, and I probably will cover this actually because uh, there was a question on the channel about this. It was actually my question on the channel about this. What, what the hell does this thing do? Um, on my sampler, because uh, I've got an S6000 and I've never used the BNC. There's a BNC connector on the back of the S6000. And I've never used it. And I, I was sort of wondering what it, what it would be used for. And someone came back to me and said, it's a clock source. Um, and then that sort of triggered it because yes, back in, in the good old days, you would have a master clock source in your studio and you'd have everything linked to that master clock source so that you only had one clock. Um, it was sort of a bit pre-MIDI really, to be honest, because once MIDI came along, you could put the clock source on the MIDI. But prior to that, you had to have a clock source to try and keep all the various instruments or the click track in sync. There you go, I've forgotten all about that it's so long ago. Anyway, it is a glorious day out there. I've got some more filming to do today. I, have, I am going to uh, go down to the studio, I'm going to raid it and bring some stuff back. And I'll do some more filming here this afternoon, um, showing you uh, how the ARIA stuff goes together. That's my intention. Whether I get there or not, it's a different matter. Since I seem to sort of have my days a bit hijacked recently. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to go and have bacon and a cup of tea. And I shall see you next time. Bye bye. I've been told it helps the channel out greatly if you hit the like button if you enjoyed the contents of this video. If you want to be notified about future videos that may be made for the channel, please hit the subscribe button.